I get a lot of questions about 401ks, and I know that there are times that they're tricky to navigate. That's why today, we want to talk about your biggest 401k questions for someone getting ready to retire soon. It's easy to get lost on the way to retirement. Things like taxes, improper planning, and excessive market risk can all lead you astray from your goal of a successful and happy retirement. That's where Liz Whittaberry comes in. She's a holistic financial advisor and the founder of Best Path Advisors, and she can help guide you to a better financial path. This is Retire on Your Best Path with Liz Whittaberry. Welcome into this week's edition of Retire on Your Best Path with Liz Whittaberry and myself here to talk about 401ks as it relates to pre-retirees. You know, top 401k questions for pre-retirees in 2024 is going to be that topic of conversation. And as always, if you need some help, reach out to Liz and have a conversation with her about your unique situation. She is the founder and financial advisor at Best Path Advisors, and you can find her online at bestpathadvisors.com. That's bestpathadvisors.com. What's going on, Liz? How are you this week? I am good. I'm good. We were just talking about the fact that it It was just 4th of July weekend, so that's always a wonderful weekend. Wonderful and hectic. (laughs) You and I were were just talking about it. And it's about a million degrees outside, right? So that kind of added to it as well. So, But it was a good weekend. Hope everybody enjoyed their holiday as well. And, uh, you know, it's back to business, back to work, right? So let's get into some of this stuff. Let's go through some of these questions that you see and and you deal with, Liz, for uh, clients or potential clients when people come in when it comes to, you know, these top 401k kind of frequently asked questions. So let's just jump right in. Should I contribute as much as I can to my 401k? Okay, or only get the match? Obviously, always a big top question. Right, right. And, you know, we said that this would be for pre-retirees because that's Correct. the people that are coming in and talking to me. And so when I am talking to somebody that's in that retirement red zone, they're in that five to 10 years before retirement, then I'm beginning to look at what are they going to have when they retire in the different buckets that they need to be thinking about. Because it's not just saving money into the 401k uh, bucket. You want to be thinking about how much do I have in the liquid assets that I might need Mm -hmm. outside of my retirement plan when I uh, retire? How much do I have in tax-free savings? Does my 401k have that or do I need to be doing some other outside of the 401k savings? And just making sure that, that we're getting the dollars in the best places as we get closer and closer to retirement. You should always get the match. Never walk away from the match because that's free money. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, I talk with advisors all across the country, Liz, and, you know, it's interesting. People will, I hear different things, right? Definitely get the match. Always, you know, get that free money. But sometimes, depending on some of the other variables of your unique situation, maybe not fully, you know, um, putting, pumping as much into it as you can. Maybe there's some other options out there that could give you some better, you know, resources, right? So it's worth having that individual consultation and conversation because it's like, okay, we got the free money, but what if we did, you know, if we were pumping more into a different type of account, could that be beneficial? Do do you find that as well or? I do. I do. Because I think people need to look at their own individual situation. When you're young, obviously, get as much in as you can. It's an easy way to have the savings out of mind. You know, it just happens for you. Yeah. You get your net paycheck. But as you're you get stressing, closer and right. closer to retirement, then you need to get more focused on what accounts you need, where you need to have your money, what you're going to use that for when you first retire, Yeah, uh, and make sure that you don't have only traditional 401k is is the only asset when you're retiring. And I have seen that where somebody had 99% of their money was in traditional 401k uh, and there was very little elsewhere. Gotcha. You don't want to do that. You need a lot more flexibility than that. Yeah, especially again, focus on pre-retirees. We, we got to diversify as the saying goes, right? Not just like the yes. holdings we have, but also the different kinds of accounts and different kinds of buckets and so on and so forth. So we'll expand on that a little bit more, I'm sure, as we go through these let me give you another one here. Uh, can I make catch-up contributions to my 401k, right? So if so, how much and when? You know, the government does help us there if we're talking pre-retirees. Once you get over 50, we can do some of this. Exactly. Yeah, you can actually get, you can absolutely get more in. If you are under 50 this year, uh, your basic limit is 23000 Mm-hmm. The total that you and your employer can get in is 69000 So that's the total amount that can get into your plan this year. Which is not a change. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a lot of money. 
It is. Mm -hmm. And if you're over 50, then you get to add 7,500. So those numbers increase to 30,500 for your basic, you know, deduction from your paycheck Mm -hmm. and then 76,500 in total. If your employer allows you to do the mega backdoor contribution, you can get some above that 30,500. I've got one client that Mm -hmm. is maxing out, Mm -hmm. um, has already maxed out the base contribution level, is done the catch up, is doing the mega back door to get more into the Roth. And she is actually going to be retiring within the next year or two. Mm-hmm. Um, and she has all of her other buckets filled up. So we already have, you know, the taxable savings, the tax free, we've got a lot of buckets filled up. So we're just trying to get as much as possible into that Roth 401k this year. Okay. I have another client that is going to retire in the next two to three years, and she doesn't have those other buckets maxed out. She's been just really putting money into the 401k and has the amount of savings that you would typically be told to have that three to six months. So we're going to build up some of those savings so that she has a lot more liquidity and flexibility when she first retires. So we've actually pulled back her 401k contribution to get the match only. And beyond that, we're doing uh, some savings into some other areas. So again, it it really depends on where your money is and what kind of cash flow you're going to need and, and where should you have that money positioned. So I think it's important to look at that in that retirement red zone, that five to 10 years before you retire, begin looking at where are you at now and where should you be when you hit retirement. Yeah, great point. So, and if you're one of those folks that feel like, hey, I'm behind and I do got to catch up, even if you're just doing that max there, that 30500 and you're talking a 10-year window, that's not chump change, right? I mean, that's 10000 right. or excuse me, that's 10 years at 30000 It's three hundred grand, right? So that's going to certainly add a lot to your, your potential retirement. So, um, But then again, with other strategies in place that, as Liz just pointed out, there's other things you could be looking at. Uh, when should I take my money out of my 401k and possibly roll it over to an IRA, Liz? You are allowed to do that if you change jobs. So if you've got old 401ks sitting out there, you want you might want to look at that. You could do that when you hit age 59 and a half as an in-service rollover. And then when you retire, you have the ability to roll it over. You want to look at your situation again. It's always based on your situation. And think about whether you want to increase your investment options, you want to have a little more flexibility to align that portfolio with your retirement goals, and would it make sense to consolidate your accounts and put that where you're also getting some planning? You know, those are some of the big reasons that I see people roll over money to an IRA, because it just gives more flexibility, more control, more options, and allows for the retirement portfolio to begin to be lined up with what they want to have in retirement when they're actually retired. And so again, it's, uh, it's something that's good to look at in that retirement red zone that five to 10 years ahead of time, begin to think about what might you want to move to an IRA to go ahead and get it lined up as opposed to just leaving everything for the point in time that you retire. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And I think the key word there is control, right? We've talked about that a number of times where it's just giving you more flexibility, putting more of that control in your hands and in your financial advisor's hands versus just whatever the option that, you know, you have at the company that you're at. So uh, control. Yeah, and I think I think that's very important when you're thinking about what is my portfolio for the long term? Mm-hmm, you're going to be right. retired for a very long period of time, but you're not going to necessarily leave it in the 401k for that period of time. So if you begin to move some money into an IRA, say five years before retirement, four years before retirement, you're making some strategic changes, you're beginning to get some of those funds really where they're going to be for the long term. Yeah, And that gives you better, you're not doing it all at once. We've talked about the impact of market volatility. You're not leaving that movement of lining up your portfolio to the long term to just one day in time, you're doing it over time in a very uh, organized and and structured manner. And and that's much better for your long term portfolio. Yeah, great point. Well, let's talk taxes then, Liz. So what tax implications are we looking at by contributing to a 401k? And, you know, how might it affect the take home? 
Absolutely. That's a big question. Um, if you are doing the traditional 401k contribution, then that goes in. You're not taxed on it. That's been a big draw to making these 401k contributions. But down the road, then when you pull it out, you're going to pay taxes on that and on all of the growth. If instead you are contributing to the Roth 401k, more and more 401ks have a Roth portion, then you're going to pay tax on it. There's no tax break at the point in time that you're making that contribution. But then down the road, when you pull money out, that's going to come out tax-free. The growth is going to come out tax-free. Of course, there's some rules around that, but you know, you would you would wait the time that you needed to wait. So the the difference becomes when do you want to pay tax on the money? Do you want to pay tax now and save tax in the future? Or do you want to avoid the tax now, defer it to the future and pay tax later on? And you want to think through that. How can you minimize your lifetime tax bill? Which yeah. would be the better? Yeah. And again, that's part of having a good plan, looking at what would be the better place. Often uh, when people come in and and we meet, we look at where they're saving. If they're saving only to the, the traditional 401k, then we begin to move some of that, shift that over to the Roth 401k portion. Maybe not all of it all at once, because that could be a big change in how much tax is you know, taken from their paycheck. But we begin to make some shifts so that we get more and more money that's in that tax-free bucket so that when they're in the re retirement, they don't have to pay tax on those dollars or on the growth. And that's the biggest thing, not having to pay tax on all the growth on the money. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So when we're thinking about frequently asked questions, Liz, a lot of times people feel like, hey, you know, again, if you're a pre-retiree or whatever the case is, I, I've put money in a 401k um, and I've just let it sit there, right? So I'm getting closer to retirement. It's been sitting for a while and I've never messed with it. It's a set it and forget it kind of thing. Typically a target date fund kind of comes to mind. But how should I be adjusting as I get closer to retirement becomes that frequently asked questions. Should I be adjusting and, and how do I do it? That is a really good question. And in our last podcast, we talked about target date funds. So right, right. if somebody has some uh, interest in what the research shows about target date funds, just tune into episode number 48. But when you're getting closer to retirement, then obviously you need to be thinking about your long-term risk. Now, if you're in the 401k world, then you're going to be limited to those investments that you have within that plan. And you don't want to get too conservative because you're going to live for a very long time in retirement, hopefully, have many years in retirement. So you've got to have that retirement portfolio, keep up with inflation. It needs to do all the things that you want it to do over all of your lifetime. Uh, and so Again, I think it's important to start to think about lining up that portfolio with your retirement cash flow plan, beginning to move the money. If the 401k doesn't have those investments that you that you need to mm -hmm. do that, begin to move the money to an IRA that will let you do that, begin to get your bucket plan in place a couple of years before retirement. So I think, you know, it, it can be making some adjustments to line that portfolio up with your long-term retirement plan. And that probably means you need more investments than are available in the 401k. Those tend to be more of the small cap, more of the uh, longer duration bonds. You just have less options that are really what a retiree would need uh, versus somebody that's starting out to save and, and working. Those 401k plans are are geared and designed for people that are working and have a lot of time ahead of them to save and need that growth and, and the volatility is not going to impact them because they're saving for retirement. You're at retirement now. You need to start lining that up with um, the investments that will support a retirement cash flow plan and pulling money out as opposed to putting money in. Horizon is always a big deal, right? We always think about, we talk about time horizon, and certainly that's going to be the case even when dealing with something like our 401ks. Everything when it comes to retirement really is around that time horizon. And, and as we're getting closer, changes that we need to make, something that maybe worked 10 or 12 or 15 years ago, uh, you know, while it might still work now, it doesn't necessarily mean it's as effective as it could be. 
because your time horizon is getting shorter. So good good points there to make sure that you're thinking about. And again, these are frequently asked questions that people uh, tend to ask financial advisors like Liz. So let's do one more here, Liz. We'll wrap it up this week. Uh, risks or benefits of company stock inside a 401k. Thoughts there? Yeah, I, there is certainly a lot of risk if you invest too much in the company stock. You don't want to have all of your eggs in one basket, as they say, and we saw that with Enron. We've, we've seen that with other companies. Sure. Companies do like the company stock in the 401k because it gives them more shareholders. It, it gives them the ability to have a lower cost for doing their company match. Uh, and so there's a lot of benefit to the company. The employees like it because they know the company. And if they feel confident in the company growth, then they want to invest in that company that they're working for. So you just have to monitor the risk, make sure that you don't have too much in just the company stock, that you're still keeping a level of diversification. You're keeping the amount of company stock at what would be a, you know, a a reasonable percentage of your total portfolio. But if you do have that, then you could have the, the ability to invest early on in the company stock, let that grow, and then roll that over under the net unrealized depreciation. So, you know, my thought would is if you're going to invest in company stock, do that earlier on and then let that have as much growth as possible and and roll it over under net unrealized depreciation because what happens is when you roll that out, you pay tax on just the cost basis in that company mm-hmm. stock. Right. And then you get to defer the tax on the gain in that company stock. And then later when you sell it, you get to pay tax at capital gains rates instead of ordinary income rates. So you're going to save 10 to 20, 25% tax on the gain in that company stock. So it's not a bad thing. It's just, you know, a risk that you have to manage and something that you should think through strategically to make the most uh, tax wise out of having the, the ability to use it. That makes sense. I know. And again, we got to think about all these different pieces, right, when it comes to getting ready for retirement. So if a 401k, you know, questions are on your mind and you're in that pre-retiree stage, uh, you know, the best thing you can do really, Liz, is to get on the calendar and talk with an advisor, right? Sit down and, you know, run some data and see what kind of options you're doing. What are you doing now? uh, And is there places that could be more effective? Absolutely. You know, I think that, again, if you're in that five to 10 years before retirement, it's important to get a plan. Make sure that you have a plan, that you have that roadmap. And to me, it's like driving in the fog. When you when the <laughs> fog lifts and the fog clears, then you can really see the road and it helps you to drive more confidently, you know, get where you're going more safely. That's the same with having a plan. When you have that plan for retirement, then you know everything that you need to do. Here's the here's where I'm going. Here's the road map, you know, here's the things along the way that I need to make sure happen. And then you can spend more, retire sooner, you know, do all the things you want to do and be very confident about that. Yeah. And then you're not white knuckling it, right? You're not squeezing the steering wheel (laughs) in in that fog. So uh, if you got some questions, folks, you need some help, reach out to Liz, bestpathadvisors.com. That's bestpathadvisors.com. Lots of good stuff there you can check out. As a matter of fact, on the good stuff, there's a little tab there for drop downs, webinars, videos, blog. Check out our YouTube channel. Uh, Subscribe to her there for additional content. Uh, And of course, the podcast page is on there as well. And you can subscribe to us on Apple or Spotify or YouTube. Now, all that good stuff. So just find her and all that information that you need at bestpath advisors.com and get yourself some time on the calendar with her as well bestpathadvisors.com Liz thanks for hanging out and breaking this down this week always appreciate your time thank you good to talk with you yep absolutely and we'll see you guys next time here on the show don't forget to subscribe to us again on retire on your best path The preceding program is sponsored by Best Path Advisors, which is solely responsible for its content. Securities offered through J.W. Cole Financial, member FINRA SIPC. Investment advice offered through J.W. Cole Advisors. Best Path Advisors, J.W. Cole Financial, and J.W. Cole Advisors are unaffiliated entities. The opinions expressed by Liz Whitberry should not be construed as specific tax, legal, or investment advice, nor as an offer to buy or sell any securities mentioned herein. 
Neither JW Cole Financial nor its representatives provide legal, tax, or accounting advice. Persons who provide such advice do so in a capacity other than as a registered representative of JW Cole. Investing is subject to risks, including the loss of principal. Due to volatility within the markets mentioned, opinions are subject to change without notice. Information is based on sources believed to be reliable, however, their accuracy or completeness cannot be guaranteed.